This video has been on my mind for a while. I wrote a paper on this a couple years ago, the six DB drop technique for sizing the length of flaws. Not great. Take it from somebody who's messed this up many times in his early days, scanning a weld and under calling the length of a flaw because I used the six DB drop technique. What we're talking about here is if you're not familiar, this is where you take the probe, you find the flaw, you move it back and forth, find the peak, you mark that position and then you take your probe and then move it either side till the signal drops halfway on your screen, halfway down, which is a drop of six decibels. You put two little white lines, you draw a line in between, you go, yay, I found the fly length, but you probably didn't. Let me give you an example of what I mean. This is a three quarter inch weld specimen. It did have a cap on it. We took that cap off for other reasons. I've got a five megahertz, 60 degree probe and my sauna test wave. And I'm going to put the probe down here. Now I've already taken the liberty of marking the extents out. And uh, you can see we're going to move the probe back and forth till we get a peak in the signal, which is in the middle. And then I'm going to pull the probe towards me till the signal drops about six decibels down to about here. And I'm going to put the probe the other direction till the signal drops about six decibels, which is about, about right there. We've measured the length of the flaw, right? No, it didn't work. Actually, the flaw in this plate goes almost from one end to the other. The reason why it doesn't work is that real weld flaws are fractal. They're wiggly, they got little zigzags in them and completely different than side drilled holes or notches. Those don't have any little wiggles in them. The amplitude at any point along the hole or the notch is exactly the same. In fact, the signal as you slide your probe will actually plateau. It will stay at a position and then at the end it will drop off. And yes, when half the beam misses the end of the hole, you are approximately 6 dB down. You can mark the end, you'll be pretty accurate. That's nothing like a real weld flaw. The problem with the 6 dB drop technique is that you are likely to undercall the length of a flaw. This means marking out a section in the middle, basically the really bad part, having the welder come in, grind it out, they may see it visually, repair it, you're gonna go back and what you may find is now you have a flaw before the repair and another one after. Less amplitude, but they're still there. And this divide and conquer thing does not look good on you and it does not look good on the welder. Nobody's happy. Uh, what if we use a 12 dB drop or a 20? Is that better? It will create longer flaw lengths, but again, you are just guessing. All of these numbers are just a guess. You're just taking the center of the flaw and assuming that X number of decibels difference between that and the end. There are two better ways to do this other than the 6 dB drop technique. They're fairly easy. Number one is to just take the probe and keep moving it until that signal doesn't drop six decibels. It actually drops below the point you don't care. I call this the don't care level or disregard level in AWS D11 for structural welds in the United States or CSA W59, same thing for here in Canada. We call this a class D. I like to think D stands for don't care or disregard. This one's called the max amp technique. I actually don't like that name, but we'll use it anyways. It should be maybe called the last amp technique. You're going to be looking for the last tiny little spot where the signal goes up and down. And what you're doing is finding the last part of the flaw that passes through the center of your beam, regardless of amplitude. I'll take my probe, put it back down here. I'm going to turn the gain way up so we can see what's happening because you're going to have to do that to find these last little signals. And you're just going to keep moving it. See, there's a big spot there. That means it's still around. You see, there's a nice big spot here. If I kept moving, see where it peaks right about there. I could mark that, but I'm going to keep going and see if there's any more. You got to watch that thing in front might be the ID rumble. In fact, I think it is. There's another little bit right here, up and down. I happen to know that's right at the end. So you're going to move your probe till about right here. I'm going to mark the flaw end right there. And that's how you use the max amp technique. 6 dB drop, great in the classroom on side drill holes and notches. Not great in the field because real weld flaws are fractal. The peak of the flaw and the end of the flaw are likely not separated by exactly 6 dB like they would be with a side drilled hole. You're better off moving the probe till it gets to the don't care level or using the max amp technique. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and thanks for watching.